Hello, I'm David Spence. I'm a resident and citizen of the city of Port Moody and also sit on the Centennial Steering Committee, which is planning the programs, events, and projects to help the city celebrate its centennial of incorporation throughout the whole year of 2013. I have the special and unique opportunity to have with me Colonel Richard Clement Moody, a Royal Engineer, after whom the city of Port Moody is named. Richard Moody, Colonel Moody, glad to have you with us today. And uh, can you tell us a little bit about how it is that you came to British Columbia? Under the leadership of Queen Victoria and the British Colonial Secretary, Lord Lytton, uh, they wanted a strong British presence in the new colony of British Columbia. And so they asked me to gather together uh, a number of Royal Engineers with particular skills and experiences, and we created the Columbia Detachment so that uh, we could uh, assist uh, Governor James Douglas in establishing peace, good order, and good government in the new colony of British Columbia. And Colonel Moody, how is it that your name got associated with the city of Port Moody? Well, one of the works that I accomplished early in my five-year stay in the colony was that I built a road from New Westminster, which I had laid out as the capital of the colony of British Columbia, and north to Burrard Inlet. And where the point of the North Road met the waters of the Burrard Inlet, the captain of the survey ship, HMS Plumper, George Henry Richards, decided that as a legacy to Colonel Moody, that point would be named as Port Moody. And the name stuck on the records, on the maps, and throughout the head of the inlet, the Snug Harbor, as it was called at one time, uh, kept. And what were some of the other projects that, and uh, works that you performed while you were in the colony of British Columbia around the city of Port Moody, or what came to be known as the city of Port Moody? Well, I built... Kingsway Avenue, Cumberland Street, uh, the Caribou Road from Hope through Yale and Spence's Bridge on its way to Barkerville for the continuation of the gold rush. I kept the peace with Judge Matthew Begbie when a little uprising and conflicts happened along the gold rush among the Americans and the Chinese. Um, I also uh, helped build Anglican churches throughout the colony, including uh, the Holy Trinity Anglican Cathedral in New Westminster, St. Mary's the Virgin in Sapperton, and little Anglican churches in Hope and Yale and Spence's Bridge. Uh, those were some of the things that I did in addition, as well as uh, we uh, made sure that the sappers and their families had a social, educational, and strong religious life. That was quite an extension of work throughout the southern part of what became known as the province of British Columbia. Who were some of the uh, associates and colleagues and companions that you worked with during that time? It was a good question, David. Uh, I had uh, about 150 other sappers or royal engineers who helped me on a lot of the projects. Of course, uh, the governor, James Douglas, was a primary um, colleague that I worked with. Uh, Matthew Judge Begbie was another one, Reverend uh, James Sheepshank, uh, Edgar Dudney, uh, were some of the people. Also, there was a special person by the name of Lulu Sweet that I worked with at one point. Uh, those were some of the uh, people that uh, I worked with, not only here uh, at the head of the inlet, 
but also along the Fraser River during the gold rush uh, in New Westminster and in Victoria. I also have with me uh, your wife, Mary Susanna Hawks Moody, who I understand came with you uh, to the colony in 1858. Mary, can you tell us a little bit about what that journey was like for you and what uh, life was like in the new wilderness that you came to? Well, first of all, the journey was a very difficult journey because I was pregnant at the time. And it took two months to arrive in Victoria, and my fourth child was born while we were on the journey. Fortunately, I had two servants along with me who were helping me, but it was a very strenuous trip. And then when we got to Victoria on Christmas Day, and following that, we went over to our new home, I discovered that we didn't have a house to live in. We had to live in a tent. And I lived with four children and the two servants for a year and a half in that tent in New Westminster before we had a home built for us. So it was a very difficult time, especially because I came in England, I came from the family of a banker and I was quite used to somewhat a better style of life. So it was a huge adjustment for me, but fortunately I was young, I was strong, and it worked out very well. Thank you, Mrs. Moody. That was quite an experience and an extreme uh, difference between the life that you were used to in England and life on the ship and life in the wilderness. And I understand, uh, Mrs. Moody, that uh, you too have a legacy in the territory. Yes, there is a legacy named after me, and that would be in Port Coquitlam, Mary Hill is, is my name bearing uh, legacy. And I think probably that there's many horses that slow down on that road. I know the place well. And Colonel Moody, I understand that there are, uh, you know about a couple of descendants uh, of yours that live or have visited the territory. Well, there are two descendants, uh, David. Um, one is the great-great-great-grandson of Colonel Moody, who uh, was a, is a member of the First Nation, Katsi First Nations, and he lives in the area and was able to attend the um, 200th birthday party of, that was held for me in uh, Port Moody. He uh, had the opportunity to come with about 98 other folks from the Caribbean, uh, from Barbados, where I was born in 1813, uh, from Jamaica, local politicians, and uh, dignitaries from the city. The other descendant is my great-great-granddaughter. Her grandfather was one of the children that came over on the ship that Mary talked about. And she came from Melbourne, Australia, bringing with her some documents and artifacts that showed her connection with the Moody family then and now. Thank you, Colonel Moody and Mrs. Moody for coming and joining us uh, in this time of centennialization of the city of Port Moody. It's been a good year, and we hope that everybody has had a good year uh, attending many of the events that celebrate the centennial of the city of Port Moody in 2013. Thank you, David.